Inside the Circle, Season 10, Episode 5, Take 9. <laughs> we are back, folks. We are back, actually. It's been a while. We've I had a bit of a layoff. Um, had some family stuff going on, you know, just doing things. Yeah, but we're back. We've been around. We've been following along on social media. I don't think we've media. had a show since the Licking Heights invitation, the 50th Invitational. Yes, we were on location all for location. that. Great hey, what's going on? Remember that cute Hey, what's going on? So that was good? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sean. We got a lot to show. cover here. We got a lot going on here. Watch the show. Tell your friends about the show. Subscribe. It's going to be legit. We got some whiteboard predictions coming. Obviously not this week. Next week. But, um, got some oh, you don't have any uh, results entries? Brackets, <laughs> nothing? <laughs> <laughs> any results? Any lineups? No. Uh, Sean, tell me a little bit about your t-shirt. Oh, yes. My t-shirt here. Since we were at the Licking Heights Invitational, yes. I went to the Riemann Invitational. I yes. love that. Me and Mark have covered that for 20 years. I like the tournament, the way they run it. I love the... Um, the message they're sending there. They're, yes. They talk about community, family, yep. don't forget the people, and it's just well run. If they say they're going to start at 10 o'clock, they start at 10 o'clock. So Dog thank right. you for inviting us up there. We love coming every year, and you will see us again next year. One more thing. This episode, 10.5, that's the one, is brought to you by Professional Gutter and Drain. If you got gutters, check them out. <laughs> we had water. We had ice. They can expand, contract. You might want to get them checked out. All I'm saying is they're available to you. Get a hold of them. Awesome. That's it. Professional gutter and drain. They do a lot for us. We want to do a lot for them. Tell them about it. Uh, well, Mark, sure. Let's start here with the Girl State Tournament. The most recent event. We'll kind of work our way back from there. Tell me a little bit about the Girl State Tournament. Girl State Tournament occurred this past weekend. There were 6,573 schools represented. It felt all like in it. One, uh, it did yeah, feel like it. All in one location. Hilliard Davidson High School for a second year is going to be your host site. More on that in a second. Sean? Who walked away your champion? Who walked away wow, your champion? I wasn't a Central Ohio team. Dang it! You know that emoji with the smoke coming out? That's what I said when I saw that we did not bring home the trophy for Central District. Yeah, Harrison did come in. They did end up winning. Swoop that thing up. They did a great job. Let's nah, nah yeah, you got to give them mad props, man. But we did have state runner-up. Defending state champion, Marysville came in, come with a little steam. They it did end up taking yes. the runner-up spot. So congratulations to them. They did not have any champions, but they did have a couple uh, yes. runner-ups runner -up. there. They had Lang at 120 and Reese, I believe, at 155. And not to be forgotten, we did have another Central District state finalist and returning state champion, Elena Brown from Logan. Logan. Yes. So congratulations to all three girls and actually every girl from the Central District that Definitely. stepped on the state podium. A great showing by them. Sean, I was talking to some people about the girls' state tournament. It was legit. It was a good discussion. Talked about the um, how the dis having a district tournament uh, makes the state tournament better. I agree. And, uh, and just you have to qualify to get yeah. there. You earned it. There's yeah. a there's a sense of earning earning there, and there's there's a lot that goes into that. However, there's also, and we talked about this another time, I do believe, if I didn't talk to, we didn't talk about it on an episode, I definitely talked about some of the key players who I want to salute right now for sanctioning girls wrestling in the state of Ohio. It's a long list of people who pounded the pavement for years, years, and they got it done, and now OHSA is going to take it over. My point is, we talked about growing pains. This year, I talked to about five or six people. Hilliard Davidson, again, for the second time, hosted it. I think it's outgrown. Which is great. It is. It really is. It's great. I just don't know where to go next. Uh, I can tell you. Is it a high school? Yes. Oh. But the, you think it's a college. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So we leave Hilliard Davidson and we go somewhere <laughs> But I just, I, there are times where I think to myself, man, I just wish I could, I had a bazillion dollars. I would build this standalone facility for wrestling. You want to give it to me? Well, I'd give half to you. The <laughs> other half bazillion, I would build stuff for wrestling. <laughs> Um, you know, but, you talked about 65,000 million people at this event. Yeah. And I looked at the bracket. I seen that there are girls from all parts of the state, truly at all four corners, all the way up to Ashabula, down to Harrison, Toledo, all the way to Marietta. Yeah. And I think that is the key to growing anything, is to have success yes. and exposure to all four corners of the state. That Rather often, than just one pocket. Yeah, I love it. a lot it. of different schools represented there, and I think that is a huge step forward in making this really to what the vision of people who put this together are doing. Certainly. And you know, the other thing, uh, aside from the facility, the growing pains there, this is a this is a very um, positive as far as um, per, um, what do you call that when per, uh, potential? A lot of people talking about uh, man, we got this girl in our youth club, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Yeah. Like this girl's a hammer. She's hammer. a what? She's hammer. <laughs> so 
Those girls are coming up. So the girls who are right now as freshmen, sophomore, maybe qualified for the state tournament. Hey, newsflash, you've got kids on your tail that are coming up to take your spot on the podium. So just a heads up, just a forewarning to you. Sean, that's the state tournament for the girls. Um, the girls did have a state dual meet tournament. They did. They did a month earlier there where we did have some success locally. Old Danji Orange beats Marysville yes. for the title there. So congratulations to both those programs on representing Central Ohio well and having success within your community. And I will also say this. It was nice to see the, the line. It allowed Marysville to go to the Northwest for the district tournament for the uh to get to the that state was tournament. A weird line. It was, but <laughs> it enabled us to have two central districts because Marysville is not as far as you think. It's from the central district, from Columbus. So those two were able to get into the finals and I we got it. I never bought that commercial. Never bought it? Out hey, that line, line. That line is sure. trying to sell me, man. I don't know where that line starts that it's 15 minutes away, but it's not as far as you think. Uh, it's Sean. Not, it's, it's it's closer than, it's closer you, than you think. Maybe it's that's the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They keep it positive, not negative. <laughs> Sean, that's the girls' individual state tournament, the girls' dual meet state tournament. Let's talk boys' dual meet state tournament. Yeah, let's go back another week. We had the boys' state uh, dual meet tournament. Yep. I don't know if we've had the success we've had in last year's. This year seemed to be kind of a down year for Central okay. Ohio. In Division Three, we only had one representative. We had Mary Pleasant. Yep. But I think in their defense, if you talk to them and people around, we know they're just built more for a tournament than yes. they are dual. But they did have enough firepower to overcome some of those obstacles in the region to get to the state tournament. They did end up going 0-2, which, you know, it is what it is as long as they got the experience. In Division Division two, we didn't have any qualifiers from the Central Ohio. They kind of went to other parts of the state. In Division one, where I really thought we might have a little success here, I thought both teams, Dublin and Marysville, were really coming in riding the high. They both had blowout wins in the regional. Really looked like yeah. they had boys to do Good something. Call. And they kind of sputtered down the lane there. Marysville goes 0-2, losing, mm -hmm. losing to Moeller and, I believe, Brexville. Why Dublin loses in the preliminary round to Perrysburg and ends up out. winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that two-match thing. I'm not a fan of going wherever you're going and only wrestling once. So what do you think they do in softball or basketball or any other sporting event where you go to a region and compete one time and once you're out, you're out. And if I have to entice you for a second match to get you to come, how much do you really want to be here then? I'm being serious. Well, we're wrestling, so we're not softball, we're not basketball. We can do as we please for our sport. Like that? Oh, that's right. Okay. All sports are unique. This is our uniqueness. We can do that. I know, but I think when talking to the higher bees, when they say, well, the, the thing was we, we added another match Round, so, yeah. to get them to come, like, I don't, you, don't need to, oh, like I don't, you don't need to entice me to come. I'm coming. That but was that was a, a that selling was, point. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I didn't know people that. People complained about not wanting to go from Cincinnati to Cleveland for one match to wrestle St. Ed's. That was a legitimate complaint. Okay, I here. didn't know. Well, you're the one who talks to the OHSA. Hey, I'm the one getting mad at me. I'm not having a meeting them with on Tuesday at lunch. I'm not. Some of us are, are but I'm not. Yeah, it's a good call. <laughs> you guys molding the minds of America. Um, Sean. Well, anyways, okay, you know, yeah. again, anyways, that's the, uh, the uh, sectional uh, state dual roundup yes. there again. Let's build off of that and see what we can do going forward. Speaking of going Which, forward. Which, hold on, before oh, we go, go ahead. there are changes coming in that format. Ch -ch -ch changes Which is good. I have no I'm, clue. I'm not a fan of the, the uh, we've talked about this before, I'm not yeah. a fan of the current uh, process we have in place, and my biggest complaint is I don't know why we're seeding teams 12 months out. If we want to pick the teams and then see what kind of team we actually got when we get closer, yeah. let's kind of figure it out there. But I do think there are changes on the docket that are coming, so I like the product going forward. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad that you've uh, made your piece known. And uh, I'll get off my soapbox. There now. you go. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Sean. You mentioned uh, postseason coming up. We do have postseason coming up. Yeah, this is an exciting time. This is an exciting time. Uh, division three, Division two, and Division one sectional tournaments are this Friday, possibly, and Saturday. And uh, top four advance to the district tournaments, and then those top four go to the state tournament. Sean, I'm really excited about that. Uh, well, I don't, uh, let's start off with Division three. Yeah, let's start off Division three. There's a little change here. We're, we're talking about some changes. There's a change in Division three this year. First time in a long time, probably since the mid-90s, Division three is going back to a one-day sectional. Why is that possible, Mark? Um, I know why that's possible, but I'm not going to tell. I'm going to let you tell. That is possible <laughs> because OSHA has went to a six 
match limit as opposed to a five. So this guarantees there's no kid who gets into yeah, third yeah, place third match and, can't, and yeah. can't wrestle. Although in this sectional, I don't think that was going to come. I don't even think the five match rule comes to play in this because we do have 22 schools. They will be competing at the Ridgedale location. It's a one-day sectional. This sectional feeds into Heath. Yep. But I've, even though we have 22 schools there, I'm going to put the over-under at... 115? One. 22 and a half. 122 and a half of number of kids that are actually entered. And unless you have a full 16 man yeah, bracket, that's, the, yeah. the five match yeah. doesn't really count. But I do like the idea of OSHA saying, look, let's go six just to cross all bases since right. we're going from a two day to a one day just to make sure no one gets uh, jammed up there late right, and can't right, wrestle right. for third. Because obviously, that third place match. That's the that, big difference. Yeah, I mean, Don't, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, really. Put where your name. Sometimes I mean, we all look at brackets on Saturday night after the sessions to see where we're at. If you got forced into a spot you couldn't yes, earn, yes. that's kind of as unfair as though. I like the movement there. Great job, OSHA. After I just beat you up about all your other stuff, I'm gonna put a feather in your cap on this one. But Division Three, Ridge, Ridgedale, one day, twenty-two schools. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Mary Pleasant, my personal pick. For the sectional favorite at that, uh... I think they're a pretty solid favorite because I think me and you started doing the math on the teams that are going to be there, and not many teams are going to have a full team. Right, and, and when you bring the hammers, when you bring six hammers, yeah. and the other teams only have maybe eight or nine total kids, you're yes, probably going to score them. I don't know if you know when the biggest scoring is in the tournament. I would assume semifinals. Semifinals. Oh, you saw my note, didn't Yep, you? sure you did. My the semifinals. So, and I think they're going to have a lot of semifinal winners. Oh, yeah. So, Sean, uh, that's Mary, good. Mary Pleasant will be your favorite coming out of that sectional. Go from Spartans. Then, from then, we're going to move over to Old Man's Ben Licking Valley, where Mark's pretty familiar with. Talk to us a little bit about this. I think we have 21 schools. Is that correct? That is, uh, you would think that's correct. However, one school did drop out. Beechcroft went ahead and Beechcroft dropped has dropped out since dropped 20. Out. Okay, so, so now, now we're, down, 20. we're down to 20 now. Is yep. that a one day? No, interesting you should ask that. Okay. You just talked about the other sectional, the Division Three sectional being a one day. You would think, well, if they had the same, they had more teams, then this one would definitely be a one day. But it's not. It's a two day, and I'll be honest with you, Sean, this is a personal opinion. I believe that the D2 numbers will be higher than the 122 and a half that you just called for. Ooh, if I had a guess on that, I would say one... 47 and a half. I'll take over that. Okay, really? I'll say 160? over 150. Okay, 150s, you're over. These are pretty good. Yeah, schools. you're right. Division two wrestling in Central Ohio is really starting to pick I agree. up. They have a lot of numbers, so I expect that. Plus, if you have a 16-man full bracket, do you really want to wrestle that in one day? No. That's no. a lot. Man. That, that's putting a lot sun on the up kids. Sun down, boys. A lot on the coaches, a lot on Rest, the referees, yes. the, the table workers. That my is butt. a lot, and I do expect yeah, no <laughs> doubt. My keister <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> in the bench all day, so uh, True. I do like that they had stayed to a um, two-day event here for this section, which might be one of only a handful in the state. I'm going to say that over, over under four sectionals in this state that are two days at three and a half, oh, and I would take the under. under. Yeah, I, I ain't hating under, on that. So. I'm not, and you know, there's some really good, really good schools here at this section. So it's, and I love what you said there. I think there's going to be. Some full brackets, you know, 14, 15, well, 16. Well, look, last year the most bracket had 16 kids. It was okay. 152. And the lowest bracket was 106. It only had six. <sighs> so we yeah. kinda, we're kind of all That's over. That's a big disparity. That is yeah. a big disparity. So, uh, all good. All good. But well, I think this is going to be a blanket finish. Not a photo finish, but a blanket finish. That means more than two. Man, more than two. Look at Mark here. But let's talk about some of these teams that are going to be fighting for this <laughs> sectional title here. Oh, we know what these teams are. Um, it's so funny. I, I may have mentioned this in the last show. I talked to London. They're like, man, Jonathan Alder is going to come out of nowhere. They're going to win this thing. Talk to the Jonathan Alder folks. Man, Licking Valley still got it. Licking Valley, you talk to them. The sales is really good this year. Like, hey, no one's calling that they're going to win. Sales? Yeah. I think Hyman's going to win. <laughs> Nobody's, yes. Nobody's marked even touching this with a 10 foot pole. Hey, don't. And they're all said the same thing. Mark, don't pick our team to win. You're the kiss of death, man. I think, hey, man, I'm going to tell you right now that I, I am, I've called it since the beginning. I think Licking Valley is the team to beat until they are beaten. Could it happen this year? Well, you better you better follow along if you have any And who did you pick last year? Licking Valley. Oh, John, oh, yeah, John. Oh, yeah, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Uh, he, guess he's you wearing know, a shirt. I joked about that with Coach Tate, like, oh, please, oh, please, please. <laughs> dang it, man. Dang this, dang it. We well, have no chance of winning now. Well, real quick, um... I do think St. Francis de Sales, Licking Valley, and Jonathan Alder are teams that everybody knows. I agree. And, and those, the, those three teams will be at the top, in the top five. However, there are two other teams that really no one is talking about that will probably round out your top five. Probably. But, 
It'll be closer than I think people closer say. Closer than the experts? Yes, yeah, closer than the experts say. Uh, Sean, introduce the two teams. Well, who I think is the front runner here, which I'm a little nervous on, I'm going to be honest with, is St. Francis de Sales. Okay. Here. When you look at their team, they have Lopez, McClellan. M no, no, you're right, you're right. Okay, okay. Yep. Shulaw, Squared, Barford, Rush. Yep. But after that, they you know, it gets kind of thin here. They got Ben and Hegaway, and your boy at 5765. Who's uh, Frolic at 70, Frolic 75. Yeah. 75. Yeah. There. After that, I don't know where all these points are going to come from. I think this sectional is going to be like a roller coaster. I think, the game. I think Licking Valley, Jonathan Armour, and Highland, who nobody's talking about, is going to have a lot of. Uh, Point scores, kind of like those Constellation Warriors. I got you. And the cells are going to be sitting back waiting for the semifinal round because that's when they're going to make the room. Boom. One thing about this sectional is it's historically been, historically been favorable to front runners. Last year, Jonathan Otter got out on top on day one. The day it's before, it. London got out on I mean, the year before? Yeah, yeah, I got you. London I got, you. got on top. These teams that get out on top are hard, to, yes. hard to run down, but I think this is a year that. Uh, the sales can maybe get them in the final turn there. Talk about your Licking Valley team. Talk about some guys in that. I will gladly talk about the team. I, I, I've had the chance to see them. Uh -huh. uh, they were in a dual meet uh, at Watkins Memorial. They were also at the Licking County Championships last week. They have Hornfeck at 106. They have uh, uh, AJ Kimball down at. Uh, <clears throat> 113, excuse me. They have. Uh, do you Perkins. like 113? No, I do. I, you said that. Uh, 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 they have. Uh, Recently committed to Otterbein, uh, Joe Perkins. They also have uh, returning state finalist, Elijah Stevens. They have Rohrenbeck at 138. They also have Boyd, 150, 157 area. These guys, they and have... And they have a lot of guys who can score. But that they have, that's my point. They have a lot. They yeah. have 12, 13, or 14. And yeah. they're, they're, they will at least all win one match. Those yeah. guys that we didn't mention, they will probably all at least win one. If they can win two and get those kick-in points, watch out. They're starting to climb up the board. You get four guys that are winning, and you know how many points... A win is in the constellation now, right? One okay. point. How much is a pen? But a worth? pen, that's my point. Points worth hold the on, same. Hold on. How much is a pen worth in the championship? Two. How much is a pen worth in two constellation? Oh, so oh, they can oh. pull out a pen down there. That's that's big points there. So Sean, that's that's until proven otherwise, which it could be this year. My point is Licking Valley is my front runner. Are you gonna wear a DeSale shirt if they win? No, actually I've got a plan to wear a little quarter zip, uh the throwback to I think, I think. Rumor has it, Luke Fickle's warm-up top is still in the building. Oh, Nick, really? Yes, and uh, I've got an in that's going to try to hook me up. So it so could be... So if the sales wins, you're going to wear Luke Fickle's quarter zip from 1991 to 1992 no, yeah. on next show if the sales wins. That's it. I think that's I the case. I, I'll be doing a whiteboard prediction with the sales warm-up jacket on. Like, come on, boy. What? Nothing. That's weird. Anywho, uh, that's what we got. Um, Sean, I mean, there's some. Those, those are our top teams. Let's talk some top weight classes to really keep an eye on. And I know one you're going to talk about. And I cannot believe, hear ye, hear ye, the list is that long. Ooh, what weight is that? That's 160 pounds. Ah, how do you know that? Well, I, I do watch the show. Stuff, <laughs> I watch the show. Hashtag watch the show. Actually, the, the, the funny you say that is I think 106 is the most Open weight of any weight at the Licking Valley sectional where there are six, seven deep guys where I think the favorite might only have a 20% chance of even qualifying. Dang. There. One, there is an asterisk there. Costa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Granville. Good point. Just for Fair enough. came down from 13. Mark, you saw yes. him at the Licking Valley uh, He's freaking Licking good. County sectional there. I mean, hey, County, not only did I see him at the Licking County invitation or Licking County League tournament. Uh -huh. I also saw him all spring and summer long at an open mat. The kid is perfecting his craft. Yeah. And and I'm not going to say he could make 103, but he looked good at 106 is my point. Uh -huh. It's not like he was just on death's door. He, he laid down to weigh in. He stood there, weighed in, walked off like, I'm going to go win me an LCL championship. Then I'm going to follow up with a sectional, a district, and a state title. No, no, he didn't say all that. I'm just saying that he looked good at 106. Like... <laughs> no, but he is. I think he no. Might, he's, if he's your front runner because he moved from one thirteen down to one hundred six, he's had success. Yes, yes. He yes. could be the favorite there, but don't forget about you got Conyers from Waterson, Waterson there. True. You got Blaney from um, River, Highland. Highland, yes. Acker from River Valley. Garcia. Don't sleep on Garcia. Your boy Hornfeck over there. Yes. Guys. And then Moore, who kind of looked like maybe the front runner at the beginning Blue of the Carol. season, kind of came back to the field and like what is just going to be a mad dash for those last four spots there. Dude, I'm so excited to follow. That. I am, and I it'll really be am. it'll be a, 
I might just make that two hour drive. Do it, dude. <laughs> oh, it's only an hour and 40 minutes from your house. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, but then you got to go back an hour and 40. Yeah. yeah. I'll be there Friday night. I hope to take pictures. I can't guarantee it. Maybe take some quick videos, put those on uh, Twitter. So be following along. Sean, that's not the only weight class. Obviously, there's 13 other weight classes, but we're just trying to highlight some this way. It's not a 48 hour episode. What else um, these guys got to do? It's President's true. Day. Yeah. It's a President's Day present. Hey, I've got news for you. We also have, which I don't think we mentioned, Wrestler of John Brown, Wrestler of the Year, and a special surprise coming up. But let's talk about these oh, other weight class. Stop. Report it again. I just see guy does everything we do. <laughs> don't don't give me any more gifts. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Man. <laughs> I would like to thank everybody. No, hold on. You didn't talk about the other weight class in the Licky Valley. No, but there are but there are a couple other weights. I think of another marquee weight there is 132. I mean, we have re okay. returning state finalists from Florida and McClellan. Yep. From the sales and returning state runner up from Licking Valley. Stevens, and not to be outdone though, is Emerson from River Valley yeah, who true. has a win over Stevenson. <laughs> Who's getting that fourth spot? That's a great Oh, Remember roll the dice, dice that's there, right. He's that four spot. And the thing is, it even gets a little bit more tricky. 44, 50, 57, 65. 44 looked like a 20 deep weight class at the beginning of the year. You had True. Younger, Egan, Crabtree, Boyd, Miller, Conway, Santini from Buckeye Valley. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Zanotti. 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 Yes. But these guys have started to separate in there. Looks like Boyd's going to move to 50. Yes. Miller moved down to 38. Yep. Conway jumps in. Watson from Jonathan Otter has moved to 57 there. And where are you going to go? You're going to go to 65? We're not oh, going to do that. It's even crazy there. So I'm going to peg Younger, the Austin Powers man of mystery there. <laughs> I think he enters. I think he enters. We're going to go... Byerly from John Otter is a front runner at 50. 50. Burns is going to pretty much be hard to beat at 157. 50, and yeah. If you don't like that, what are you going to do? Go up to 65 and meet state favorite Newsom from Bishop Hartley. True. And that is, those are four weights right in the middle that there's really nowhere to go. If you're fighting for that fourth spot and you're thinking, hey, listen, I can, my, my, I can start at 50 or I can stay at 57. It's not like one's easier than the other, but you're going to have to beat oh. someone, man, to, just to get to the district. Oh. Woo! Woo! Be great Sean. day of great two days of wrestling. Yes, wrestling. and you know what I love? It's two days of wrestling. But anywho, get Sean, out of yeah. Lincoln County, <laughs> Sean. We've got D three. Talk about the sectional two day D two sectional Licking Valley. Let's talk about the four division one sectionals. Let's okay. Go. Let's talk about it. You know, splitting hairs here when we talk about what is the oh, hardest and what is the easiest. I don't think as me and Mark talked at the sectional draw, we've seen a lot of parity as teams moved around. Usually yeah, in yeah. most years you have 10 bumps, which means the sectional is full and a higher yeah. team wanted to go to that location that would bump a team to a different sectional. Usually we have 10 or 11 bumps. This year we only had five, which is extremely low because as they were picking on the board, I think at one time we had seven, 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 nine teams in the sectional. And that's pretty even. That's and, uh, pretty even. <laughs> I, mean, I know you're an English teacher, but yeah. the math, the math is <laughs> dead even. Yes. Well, I was going to say this. When you, when you talk about the balance across the sectionals, it to me, the balance across the sectionals bleeds into the following week, which gives you a more balanced district tournament. I agree. Which hopefully will give us a more successful state tournament. Now, last year I thought we did a great job, whether the uh, – the balance was there for the sectionals and or districts. But I thought we did a great job at the state tournament last year. And my hope is we can have, we can have a follow-up year this year. I think, I mean, you know how I ITC blow everything up. Yeah, you do. I think this will be the most balanced district tournament in Central Ohio history. I truly believe that. How do we measure that? Right here. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> because when I look at the weight classes... When I look at like the Marysville section or the Newark, the Lockheed, okay. whoever, I'm like, oh, this is too deep, this is three deep, this is three deep, three deep, two deep, three deep. There's mm. only one weight class at one section, and I'm like, ooh, some That's kids, deep. some kids who are gonna win matches at Derby aren't gonna get out. Only one time that happens, and we'll talk about that. Yes, we will. But before we get too far ahead, let's start at Marysville here. Okay. It has a uh, which is a, a, a surprising number to me, a average team seed of 28, but it has the top two teams in it. That, I, that is like astonishing to me. At 28. The yeah, average, I get it. The average team is like 30th, but you have the top two teams there. Yes. When I look at this weight class, it is extremely pretty much straightforward to me. I expect the top two teams in this section to max or pretty much get close to maxing the qualifiers out there. Yep. Two weights that I think are going to garner some whiteboard prediction attention will be 132 okay. and 144, with 132 probably being the marquee weight to follow at that sectional. Okay. 
So we got some we got some heavy hitters there. There nice. is going to be a scratch. Do we talk about that or do we let that happen on its own? We'll let it happen on its own. There will be a scratch That's there that I our... think is a uh, yeah. big scratch there. But um, keep your eye on the entries at 132. Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk. Where do we want to go from Marysville? Obviously, the logical place would be up Arlington. So we we are going to travel from there to Newark, which is pretty much oh. the toughest section to me. I think we're kind of splitting hairs there. It had an average team seat of twenty two point five, so we'll make it twenty three there. Yeah, okay. But I think the the the, the seedings or the rankings of the teams might be a little skewed. It does come in with three of the top five: Liberty, Taze Valley, and Grove City. Three, yeah, four, five. Yeah, yeah. Delaware at number ten rounds out the top ten, but. Newark, the host school at 17, and Darby at 19, I think might be a little better than their seeds there, so oh, okay. uh, we'll okay. give them a little bit of love there. Yeah. I like Action Liberty win this. I think they have a great combination of up top it. power, 13, 6, 20, uh, 220, 215, sorry, is going to score a ton of points, mm -hmm. but I think they have a supporting cast of Quillen, Fitzpatrick, Dierks. Dierks. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I think they have enough to uh, maybe park your boy Park there yeah, at the 120s yeah. to do something there. I think they have a great mixture of we have enough semifinalist winners to do right. it, plus we got some consolation yes. winners that can keep us a uh, couple couple uh, furlongs ahead of the rest of the field. I think the range for second could be close with two different strategies, which we'll talk about in some of the other sectionals. We have the four horsemen of Tate's Valley, Havens, Graham, McDaniels, and Thurston. Yeah. But I don't know when after that four, they kind of got a lot of hot mix. Maybe your boy at 120 there at Walls. Yep. Maybe a couple of guys younger. Oh, yeah, 138. Do yeah. something good there. But after that six, we're kind of needing some help. These guys are going to have to wrestle mm. good and get us some brackets there. True. On the flip True. side of that, we got Grove City, who's a total opposite of that. Yes. They got the two head monster of Sheets and Benson returning state qualifiers, but their level of depth from six all the way to heavyweight, I think, well, it's 215 there. I think they have more potential to do more damage in the console. Yes. So they're going to try to do it with numbers, and uh, Taze Valley's going to try to get second with superstar power at the top there. And if they can get those first round matches, they can get a pin there. Those those four horsemen it, for Taze Valley. You start yeah, racking up some points. That to, helps. Cuts coming to bracket yeah. there, don't you? Does it? Does it? Does. The only weight at that weight class where I think is going to garner the most of attention is 175, where you really have Quillen, Benson, and um, kid from Gahanna. Why is his name? Lewis. Lewis. I got it. Those three guys there. So maybe you only have one spot left open there. Could make some. And I'm and I'm guessing those three guys we talked about are going to be players the following week at Derby. So yes. maybe the bottom semifinal of that weight class might be a whiteboard seed. prediction. Uh, that could be showcase. A, yeah, right on, right on, right on. And that's that's the thing. Those two, three, I'd rather be a, a two than a three. Obviously, when I go into the district tournament. Well, me, so, I'd rather be a one. One, yeah, well, I guess. That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> yeah, what do I know? Yeah. All right, Sean, we've got Marysville. We've got Newark. We've got two left. Where are we going with? We're going to go down to your part of the uh, little, your little piece of the uh, side there. Down the old man. Memorial. Man. I can do it. Memorial. New high school there. New high school. Uh, yeah, if you're going to that... Sectional, make sure you go to Watkins Memorial High School and not Watkins High School. Okay. So I know <laughs> we they they have a new school there. They're not at the old building. So if you're driving going to the high school and you pass a school that looks like a high school, stop at the place <laughs> that looks like a high school. Don't but but the good thing is they've had enough people pass their high school yeah. that they built a road yeah, right, from yes. the old high school. From the old high school to yeah. the new one. Just watch the speed bumps. They're like <laughs> Yeah. Are they really? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, man, bad. they're legit. Dude. Nobody speeds through there. I'm telling you that right you never now. Nobody does now. <laughs> they never pass the school anymore. <laughs> That's right. Look, I ain't going over their speed humps no more, man. We'll just circle back around. Go around 270 again. <laughs> so, anyways, coming in there, the highest seeded team at this section was Mount Vernon at number eight. Yep. Followed by Westerville North at number, I'm sorry, Mount Vernon at number seven. No Westerville North is coming at number eight. But to me, for my money, I'm going with the team a little bit farther back in the seating. And number 11, I'm taking the Bears of Old Tangy Ooh. Berlin. Claws yes, up. Bears yes. down. I said Old Tangy yeah. Berlin. Claws. I think this yeah. sectional is perfectly made. If, Heffer, if they let Heffernan pick his sectional and pick what teams he could have in his sectional, he would pick this exactly the way it unfolded. I think this works out beautifully for them. And I think when they look back in the next couple of years of what was the turning point of our program, program. where we took a step forward and became established, I think it's going to be this sectional at this moment for them. Them. It's the fourth year of the school. They finally have kids that have been in the school four years, right. program kids that really know the system, know what their expectations are, and I 
think this match, this uh, sectional works out well for them. We have Hooks, Nico and Coffin in the middleweight to the rope, but I think Patel down to six, all the yep. way up to Lambert at 285 are going to yeah. be scores. We talk about that. I don't know how many weights they're entering to the sectional tournament that they don't think, hey, I can have this guy at least win one match for me. I can have this yes. guy win two matches for me. And then you add in the other guys, Emily. I think they're going to have probably nine qualifiers out of there possibly. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, Westman North is the three-time, I'll say it, three-time defending sectional champion at Watkins. Now, we're mm. hoping they don't leave all their luck at the old gym. <laughs> and I know David Grant, he might end up just being here like, no, 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 we're over <laughs> here. Bring that stuff over here. <laughs> that was a good one. Bring that stuff over here, man. We ain't leaving. We ain't leaving. But they're coming in with Uten, who obviously is probably going to max out there. Oh, uh, yes. And after that, you have Butcher, you yeah, have good. Hollett, and yep. you have Edwin White, who's just recently back as the yes. scores. But after that, you have a very unlike experienced Western North team that True. had a ton of graduation last year. Plus, I think this program is just no fault to themselves, been kind of behind the eight ball. As we all know, last year, Westville schools had shut down their sports for the first part of the year because of COVID. Right. So they had an extremely late... Uh, part to the season. When you have seasons like that, you don't really get a lot of JV wrestling in. That's right. That's and that what really said. hurts your depth of a program. Plus, this year again, they had injuries. They had other COVIDs where they had to be quarantined. Right, right. So I don't feel like they could ever get their footing underneath them to truly get the gears going. But Coach Gray knows what he's doing. I was about to say. Cultists, those, they really those think those it's going to be They know what they're doing up there, but they might be a little bit behind the eight ball there. But they're just not going to go quietly. And you can bet they're going to bring it there. And I, my guess is they want to work through the sectional and peak at the district and then get to the state tournament and be ready to rock and roll. So right. there you go. So, yeah, yeah. Maybe a great finish there. But at number three, we're going to go with seven seed Mount Vernon. And, okay. the, and the we don't bring many, but the ones we do bring hammers, oh. Dublin and Sciota, I think those guys are going to fit out the um, yeah, super effective. Yeah. There. Talk about Mount Vernon a little bit, Mark. You've had I, a chance I would to love to. Them. I have seen them. And I'll tell you what, this is my thing about Mount Vernon. And I mean this sincerely. Every kid is is at the weight that they need to be at to maximize their own potential, which bleeds to team potential. I believe their six pounder is a stud. And the thing is he can wrestle 13 and he has wrestled 20, but he weighed in at 13, but he's not a 13 pounder. He's a six pounder. The Hartman is a 13 pounder to a T he, there's no way he can make he's six. Long. He is long. He could probably do well at 20. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> that's my boy. But he is a perfect 13 pounder Spurgeon. I talked to the coach uh, he can make the. He's allowed to make the cut to twenty, but he is so much better at twenty six. And this is just an example. The the quote was, "Our room goes as Spurgeon goes." He is that much of a leader. In awesome. That, That's that, awesome. To me, you don't hear too many coaches talk about their high school high school kids like that. And when you see the Mount Vernon team go forward, that is a direct result of kids being where they need to be. Shannon. All the way up. Fireball. Through. Oh, yes. All I, these guys. Yeah. Ryland is a good. Those kids are good. And it all falls on our kids are at the weight they need to be at in order to perform maximum. So there you go. No, no, no. They're bringing, like I said, it doesn't sign up. They might end up with, they might bring five kids. They're probably five kids. Five 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 I don't know how, I do not know how Huddle does it. Like I said, he has this. Those who stay will be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they truly prove that every year. They don't have the numbers, but man, the ones they do have, those dudes are. Hammers, <laughs> man. So that should, that should be an exciting day of wrestling for you to follow. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be a good time. And that's it for the sectionals. What? Why are you all hating like that, man? Oh, no, no, no. no. We got Why one more Penn State. Like Sorry. One more Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> the marquee and joy. Oh, of my gosh. Paint it. Paint it. Paint it. Go ahead. You hate hating, man. <laughs> I'm not a hater. Ever since I moved down no. there, you be hating. <laughs> you be hating on me, the marquee jewel of the sectional tournament this weekend at Central Ohio has to be Upper Arlington High School. I mean, this school truly, th this is a lot. This is, I mean, there are more pluses to go to this sectional than there are in the math book, Mark. Well, I'll say this. There are at least two veins that I can think of. Number one, the competition is going to be there. They had the lowest average for seed, seeded teams. The average ended up being 20. So you've got the lowest average. So your competition is going to be good. On the other side of that, Sean, mm -hmm. you have facilities that are brand new. And I think it was two or three years ago, I talked to Matt Stout, Coach Stout, excuse me, Coach Scout, and he said, this high school is going to be state of the art. It turns out this high school is state of the freaking art. Like, girl state championship, why haven't you inquired about renting this facility? It's that nice of a facility. I, um, the assistant coach for Lancaster, the best central uh, coach in uh, Central Ohio, 
<laughs> he said that dude brings a lot of energy. He does bring, but he also brings a perspective that I've never seen a school like this. When he told me about the Upper Arlington Sexual, I thought, or Upper Arlington School, I thought, oh, man, how long before they take over the district tournament? Like this is an amazing facility. But anyway, I was just thinking out loud. Girls State Tournament, they want it all. Where's the Where's the equestrian this year? State championship. Oh, well, you know what I'm gonna see. It's funny you bring that up. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I'm so ex- I, I've really never been excited to go to sectionals. It's just like it's, it's like a jumping off point for me. It's not okay. like an end point. But I bet you I will beat the first bus there on Saturday. <laughs> I can't well, wait. For one, it's the closest central to my house. I okay. Got, I mean, I basically just got to jump two fences across Lane Avenue. And there I am. So, but when you're like, dude, why did the alarm go off? Who's this guy? I, I, mean, I want to see the Aquatic Center. Like, all joking aside, no, no, I, I, I truly want to see this. So, Coach Chad, I'm telling you, I'm going to get there early, and I want you to show me it's the Aquatic Center. Oh, I but love it. unlike the Watkins Memorial section, where this is going to be a blanket finish, this is going to be a photo finish for Just the team two. title. That means two teams, I think, way out in front. Okay. But the thing about this, these two teams is Lancaster started joining yeah. the uh, su- uh, Super 2x4 quad, whatever you want to call it. 2x4. At, at Hastings uh, Middle yep, School yep. that me and you have been going to. Yeah, yeah. Years. And these guys have developed a... Um, how do I politically correct this? Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll call it a rivalry against each other. Okay. And I kind of like... Uh, we don't care if we lose every match... We want to beat these guys. And I think Upper Arlington has that same match. Like, uh, we don't care if we lose. We want to beat Lancaster. They have this this rivalry against each other. And I think this year, we might turn that up a little. But I think there's a little bit more incentive to win this year. But I'm going to be, this is really going to be a fantastic um, event, section if you will, to follow. But for the keys to Upper Arlington is, I think Upper Arlington has got to come out of the box hot here. They're gonna okay. Have, they're going to have to do it in numbers. Tuhi at a fairly tough 106 is going to have to hold whole path there and get, gotcha. us, get into the top four. We got Myers, Myers taking on Hudson. Do you know Myers beat Hudson in the first round of the districts last year? But Hudson oh, went, yeah, yeah. went on to be the state qualifier while Myers goes to. He's not. What happens now? Frankie Mulligan, 120 is probably one of the most intriguing weights because there is no front runner at all. You just have a group of four or five, maybe even six tough kids. Frankie Mulligan did just make it down to 20. What can he do for him? What is Daniel Chang going to do at 26? He had a great showing at All North, made True. a great finals. Then we got Boothby kind of holding down the True. weight for them, the low weights for them at 38. After that, it starts to get a little thin for them. Other than Salter's up there. Other than Salter, you got Bagley. Mel, Mel, Mel Ragon. We have <laughs> Huber at 90. They're going to have to really get some kicking points. To me, the question is, what are they going to do at 15, 215? Okay. 215 is, without a doubt, the toughest weight of any sexual in Central Ohio. It's the weight we talk about. It is the only weight that I look at and think there is a kid that would win matches, not just qualify, maybe win a consolation round. This is a kid who could win matches at Derby. I'm going to go all in here and say a minimum. I don't know if you know what minimum means. Yeah, the lowest right? number. The lowest number. Three people. From that section of 215, step on the Derby podium. Dang! That is half the placers. Oh, yeah, I get Half it. the placers at 215 from this will, section. will come out of the section. And I'll tell you what, I'll put a small wager on four of them, do. We're Ooh. looking at people like Jameson, from oh, Thomas Thomas Robinson, Robinson. Dickerson, Lancaster, yep. Ansel, Upper Arlington, yep. Garen, Owen Daniel Orange. Orange, your boy Mullins, Woo! Tatch it. From Tatch Big Walnut. That's Woo! six people. So what happens here? What's the million dollar question? Well, does only somebody, four go on. Does somebody oh. move up to 250? Does somebody move up to heavyweight? Or does someone... I, when I look at this weight class, weight. I think three kids can't move because of the dynamics of their team. Okay. Two people, I don't think, can move up because... They're not big enough to compete at heavyweight. Oh, you gotta be they're, a minimum weight. Well, no, I think they're just oh. small for the weight. Okay. And the other one, I think, is the thinks he's the best kid in the weight, so he's not going nowhere. Yeah, why would he? And of all those things, none of them are the same kid. <laughs> What's going on here? That's I, a great weight class, man. I do think somebody moves. My okay. gut tells me somebody says, look, I don't know if you know this, Mark. Only four. You can't be a district placer if you don't get out of sectional. I That's know, true. I no, I knew, I knew that. I knew that. Okay, I, I was a four-time that. sectional qualifier. Trust me. I know all about that's that. That's not true, but that's not, <laughs> that's true. not true. But I do think one person moves. I don't know who it is. I think two should move, but I do know who I think the second person is. But I think one of them says, yeah, this guy's got a point. <laughs> you guys see this show? This guy's got a point here. All good. Well, what is, is there another weight class? It sounded like you had another weight class in well, there. Well, 120. Oh, yeah, 120 yeah. is no front runner, but no bottom feeders. That's if true. Anybody on the line can win. 
and I don't know where the advantage is. I, I, don't I know, do. I don't, I, know, I don't know where the advantage to win or lose is. Say you lose your quarterfinal match, ah. and then you win some contests to get there. Yeah. Do you got momentum going, or do you come off a crushing defeat in the city finals, finals where you're going down and this guy's coming up? I think 120 is going to be interesting because anything can happen at that weight class. I think two keys to upper rank to win, other than getting depth, upper rank to the win, they're probably going to have to have one more distant qualifier than Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And I think if... Upper Arlington wins, wins yeah. at 13 and 20, I think they'll be sectional champs. I don't think they have to win, but I think if they do yeah, win, that's it. they will yeah. be sectional champs. And where does Frankie Mulligan's mustache come into play here? That's my question. That thing is that thing is thick. It's gorgeous. That's got to be an advantage, right? You would think. I don't think. I actually think just the opposite. I think it's a disadvantage oh. because that thing probably weighs a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's legit, man. Hey, I'm telling you this right now. No, I was I, in, I'd be it, shaking it, not shaving for two years. I would never have a mustache. I was like in that. the army for three years. I shaved one time. This kid's in high school, and he is letting it go. Like, that <laughs> thing is legit, man. It's, and it's perfectly oh. level. Hey, Frankie, I love you, bud. You are awesome. I've liked you since day one I met you, man. Good job. So the key to Gales, what's the key to Gales here? I think Gales this have is a, the coach. I think they have a little bit of that dude's crazy. <laughs> I think they have a little bit of more up up top power. I got you. I think old, I think uh, Upper up Arlington can max out at five finalists as a max of them. Where Gales, I think, have seven maxes here. These guys aren't to be uh, I've forgotten about either. Hutzler, Egan, Brody Chase in the lower weights, but once these guys get to sixty five up the heavyweight, mm, they're pretty Locke. they're pretty solid favorites here. You got uh. Hoffman, Locke, Dickerson, Llewellyn. Don't forget about uh, other Chase at 65. I mean, it's, they got a lot going on there, right? And they kind of maybe they, they got a little soft there, maybe at a uh, uh, 50, 57 something. Okay, right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But Edmonds at 32 is a very, very. Um, oh, he's respectable. Very, very, very yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yes. expect him to qualify there. Yeah. So that's going to be. Can we get enough finalists to offset your qualifiers and so forth? 100%. So I think it would be really great. And again, it could come down all the way to uh, 215 of what happens what a there. What crazy Are there any oh. lineup changes there? I, I don't know. My gut tells me one person moves, but okay. I don't know, man. The way these guys coach. Yeah. I, I, you're going to win. Yeah, I think they have uh, confidence in I love it. But speaking about coaches there, where's my list at here? I just had a list. Did you see the I list? I did not take it. Did what you did see you, the list? Oh, no. You were talking about, hey, you ready for this? I'm ready. You were going to talk about um, Derek Oney from Pickerington. Oh, North. here we go. This is oh, the list. we got the list. Okay, so I mentioned not only are you going to have tough competition, not only do you have a brand new facility in Upper Arlington High School, you also have dynamic coaches that are great to hang out with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's right. He said, why are you going there? Hey, for one, it's the best sectional. Two, they have this fabulous facility. I they do? To. Three, I'm just jumping the fence, hopping, <laughs> go, go past saying nothing. You bring your swim trunks? You know, oh, oh, I'm bring that speedos, that. Before, baby. Look at the coaches I get to hang out with. Stop. Peck from Chiller Coffee. My guy. Great dude, laid that guy. Sandridge Todd. Dude, those guys are cool as heck, man. Yeah, yep. I mean, they saved me from ah, getting stabbed <laughs> in the back last year. Lancaster's assistant. I don't know if you've ever met him. Best but, assistant in all of Columbus. <laughs> you might not have seen him, but trust me, on Saturday, you will hear him. I'm all in. Coach, <laughs> Coach P down at Whitehall. Yes. Mick Swords, Bogatich Square. Yes. 4G Cyphers. Hello. Aldrin. Oh, yes, oh, yes. yes, Ramirez, Renner, my boy Renner, my boy, and Trusser, dude, Trusser was <laughs> killing me at the All North, man, dude, that guy should do stand up, he was killing me, the only <laughs> thing I wish I would have been there with my fold out chain of popcorn watching this whole thing go down, I would have loved, dude was killing me, but if that's not even enough, let me tell you who's in the stands, you know there's going to be some B-Rad up in there, Oh, B Rad Harrison and his. B Rad gonna be there. Some spy dog up there. Old, old, old man Herring. Old man yeah, Herring. Yeah, he's in. Dude, I'll see an <laughs> old man Herring all day and shoot the breeze watching this stuff go down. He'll man. probably be working. I would. I would think he's assist. He always Ooh, helps I, where he can. I know he does, but I think in this Mama one, Booth, we got him I'm doing something. Mama Booth, <laughs> gonna be running the hospitality. Yes. Running the tournament. This is just. I really am excited to go there again. I think. I this know. Is it's be been a, eight minutes. We've it's had gonna to be a great. Here. A, gr a great team. I mean, dude, ever since I moved down there, this guy's been killing me, man. I, I really am gonna love enjoying uh, um, being a part of. It. They always run a. They always run a good tournament. Yeah. They've been running the sectional district back to the '80s. They run the Lee Spencer. Yep. I mean, I mean, yeah. last year, you know, who, you know who did the uh, um, hospitality last year? Panera. 
Panera Bread. If you love hospital food, you'll love Panera. <laughs> <laughs> So Not that is our sectional wrap up. In yes, the it is. Sean, do we have anything else? We have two things. I know we do. I just want to hear you say them. We have the John rest Brown wrestler of the year, followed by. Do you want to announce it? Drum roll, please. I guess you can't. So no. Still on my thunder all show. Go ahead. No, no, no. The Ken Justice Coach of the Year. ITC is now sponsoring not only the John Brown Wrestler of the Year, named after John Brown, remarkable coach, turned official, tragically passed away on his trip down to or back from West Virginia, followed by the Ken Justice Coach of the Year. We lost Ken uh, last summer. Uh, he and his wife were on a, a vacation, had a tragic heart attack. Um, he leaves behind some family members, and we just wanted to honor what he was doing at Newark. And, the, and I would say the momentum that he, he's bringing in. And now uh, we just want to honor him. I'm going to talk about Ken Justice a little bit. For one, I think uh, there hasn't been a coach come through the district that has done more. I'm not saying no one hasn't done as equal, but Ken truly contacted us every week with results from his kids. He always sent his schedule to the beginning of the year. Yep. He wanted his kids to get the recognition that he thought they deserved. He didn't care if his kids were wrestling up at the Ironman Invitational or wrestling down in the St. Mattress of the Springs in Cincinnati. He wanted us to know that his kids were having success and they were putting hard work in to get better. And if he had a kid like, oh, this was his kid's first OCC win. He didn't come, he didn't come out to wrestling until last year, but he's worked hard in the summer. He wanted us to know that to get that out to the masses, as Mark would say, to do that. And a uh, true story, last year, the night of the sexual tournament, he calls me at midnight. Okay. And if you know me, I'm very nocturnal. I'm always up. I mean, I literally never sleep. He calls me. And he's like, hey, man, I think I got the platform fixed to uh, broadcast this show. For most of you know, Newark has done this going back to the Martinez days where their sexual has been broadcast live on some sort of feed. Last year, they had to go to a different format, so they had to change the system. He calls me at midnight. Yeah. True story. Calls me and says, I finally got it done. Huh. He's like, I really got this to work now. I test it and go, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, well, my plan was to go to Upper Arlington because it's the last section I've been talking about. Right. I want to go to the last section because it's the first section I both went to back in 1986. But from then, I was going to go to Marysville and watch the second half of Marysville. And he said, hey, man, why don't you come out here and uh, for the second part of the day and watch this? If you know me at all, I don't change my plans for <laughs> nobody. Like, I am a set in stone. Like, no, no. <laughs> He's like, you know, I said, you know what, Ken? I am going to come out there. Like, I think for, I, I appreciate you calling me, thinking to come out there. I'll come out there. I'll do the commentary for the final matches again. We'll hang out. Have a great time. He's like, thanks, man. I appreciate that, man. I'll see you tomorrow. That is the kind of person that Ken is. And I agree when we that. talk about Coach of the Year, he was working till midnight to make sure that anybody's family who was affiliated with the tournament he was hosting could watch it because yeah. of the COVID. Grandma for wherever she's at. Mom and dads who maybe couldn't have made it. This is what the show and this is what the award is about. Recognizing people who may not be the most known coaches in the district because of where they're at in the pegging order. Right. But true success is measured on how far you have come, not how far you go. And I think people yeah. realize that because some people come from very, when we talk about Coach of the Year Awards, me and Mark talked about, is there anything you want to jump in on there about? No, I just, I, I just, I, I really appreciate what you just said about Ken Justice. That's who he is. That's what he did. And um, I think where you're going with this is how far people have come. People don't realize that on the outside. I don't think they do. I, I mean, when you get a team that had eight kids and now you have 21 kids, you might not be, you might not have a district champ. Yeah. But you brought 13 more kids onto your team, and that is growing the sport. It's, it, it, I know this for a fact. You're changing 13 new kids' lives because you're introducing to the sport of wrestling. And Ken, like most other coaches, are going to invest time in the individual. And that's who he was. So, but, you know, when we look at this, me and Mark were talking about when we came up with Coach of the Year here, we, um, I asked Mark to give me five names of people. He gave me six. He was trying to be funny. <laughs> I wrote down five, and somebody else wrote down five. And of those five, I think we all had very logical and very deserving uh, candidates. Right. But only one name was on all three lists, which was crazy to me because if you know me, I always think I'm like kind of smarter than everyone. I think I'm very <laughs> clever. I think I'm clever. <laughs> that I see stuff does. And the fact that they both saw yeah. that this guy is doing a great job. And I don't know if most of you know this. When we talk about coaching in Central Ohio, it's very unbalanced. It's extremely yeah, yeah. unbalanced. We talked about, I don't know if you guys know this as well. In Columbus Public Schools, you get one paid coach. 
One, think about that. You are trying to run a program and change people's lives with one coach. Right. So these guys who are doing this, and it's not just Columbus Public Schools, there's other surrounding yes. areas as well, they're getting very little support from the administration and basically no experience on the map because most of them have first year, second year kids. Yep. We all know Columbus Public School doesn't have middle, middle school, school wrestling right. because the administration doesn't believe it's important enough. So you have people like Stephen Ayers over at uh, uh, Walnut Ridge. Ridge who are right. doing a great job the best he can to promote his kids and his team to be better people, support their school, and yes. be community-driven. Uh, Individuals. No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and that is, I think those people in the Penningtons, in the Casca, yes. people like Nathan Wilder up in Northland, or Noah yeah. Strauss, and Kelly Hilbert down in Logan, or Tom Jones, what he was doing, I think sometimes they get lost in the shuffle when we think of great coaches yeah. because they don't have the... Um, they don't, let's be honest, they're, they're not getting the move-ins that a lot of people get. They're not getting kids that go train here in the uh, two or three days a week at clubs. And right. They're doing it all on fumes. And have you ever watched a guy, have you ever, we talked about, have you ever watched a guy coach two kids at a tournament at the same time? I've been that coach, but I've also watched it. How, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not, not it's not optimal it's at not, all. It's not good for you. It's not right. good for the team. It's not good for the kids. So to all the people out there that are doing that for their team, I truly thank you for trying to make our district better through wrestling with these kids. Most certainly. And if you take that entire pool, like all the central district, we, we decided the one name that was on all three lists, I'll let you in there. You can do it. Okay. No problem. Is big walnut Aaron Renner. Um, I saw Big Wanna at the Mason Boyd Invitational, and all the kids were packing up in typical coach fashion. Hey, nobody leaves trash anywhere. I say, guys, before you leave, listen, I watched your team today, and I sense momentum. I, I see kids who are fighting for every point, which is a plus, and I see coaches saying and doing the right things. Can't beat that. No, Can't really beat that can't. at all. And ultimately, I think I think what Coach Renner has is doing, has done, is doing, and will do. Him and his staff. He's getting big wanted kids to be excited to be big wanted wrestlers. You definitely hit the nail on the head there. That is what he's getting out yeah. How can you go wrong there? That is awesome. So, Coach Renner, to your staff, this is an award for you. Sean's going to be with you. He's going to be talking with you uh, at some point during the week. He's going to reach out to you, get you a small gift, a uh, token of appreciation for you. Uh, that's the coach, Ken Justice Coach of the Year from ITC. Yes. You know, you know I ran into him. It's funny. I'm going to tell a story. I ran into him after the... Um, Cincinnati tournament, I believe it was the Greater Miami Vernon tournament. We were at the Kevin Cleveland. And I said, hey, how's it going? I was looking at results. Uh, you know, what happened there? And he said, I did I did not do the best job putting my kids in a situation to succeed. And that's on me. And I told my kids that. I need to be a better coach and getting you in positions to have success. And this is what you need to do. Next time I saw him was at the jo uh, Jonathan Order. I feel like half his team was in the finals there. Then I saw him again at the Mason, Mason Boy. Boy again. Right? He had another four or five people. I was like, man, yeah. this is guy who gets it. A coach came up to me and said, I did not realize Big Walnut was as good as they are. True story. Guy came up to me. And I'm mm. sitting there thinking like, yeah, but they're really, he just gets a lot out of his kids. And I yeah. think you definitely hit the nail on the head here, man. He gets his kids to want to represent themselves in their school. And a to the best of their ability. Yeah, really good. So congratulations, Aaron Renner, on 2000. 22, Ken Justice, Coach of the Year. We have another award to give. This one has been given for six years running. Yeah, it's been a while. It's We're been, starting to get yeah. long in the tooth on this one. That's right. Six years running. But I tell you what, this is interesting. Um, our John Brown Wrestler of the Year last year was Connor Uten. He is pinned at the top of our Twitter. I'm not kidding when I say that thing probably has fifty to 75,000 views. Is that a lot? That is a lot. Well, okay. given the fact that there's probably not but 5,000 people in Central Ohio dealing with wrestling, maybe 7,000. I don't even know what social media is. I know you don't. You can't turn on a computer. But ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. This time I'm going to turn it over to you, Sean. John Brown, Wrestler of the Year for 2022 is... Is Dylan Newsom of Bishop Hartley. Most deaf. This guy has just been a wrecking, wrecking machine off. for the last two years. Only has one loss in the last two years, which was last year's state, state finals. finals. Against a kid who's pretty good. <laughs> he ain't bad. Well, he's not right on the limb. Uh, just see what that kid did to Ironman. So, uh, yeah. great kid all the way around. You know, the thing is, I talk to literally everybody at a wrestling tournament. Okay. The janitor, the <laughs> bus driver, the lady turning the hot dogs in the concession stand. I have never heard him speak. He's just quiet kid. Never have heard him speak. Like, I don't like, think I have either. 
He just goes about his business. Yes, he does. does his math, puts his warm up song, goes back and sits down, and hangs up his tent. He's just a quiet, the quiet jet, the, the quiet, uh, what do they call that? The uh, quiet warrior. Quiet warrior. Something yeah. else. Uh, General Giant. Something okay, like that. yeah. So, uh, congratulations wow. to him. And congratulations to Bishop Hartley, Hartley High right, School. Right. Kevin Petrella, Paul Petrella, Rathburn. Those guys, uh, Barrett Williams, those yeah. guys really do a great job Coach again. Hannah. Going back to the Coach of the Year Award, the guys who don't have a lot of uh, wrestlers who get kids who have very little experience on the mat and truly really get them to uh, excel, excel. Yes, right, excel right. not only in wrestling but in their lives. So congratulations to everyone. I want to thank everyone involved in wrestling from uh, Sean Andrews, Marinelli, uh, the Remans, uh, everyone up at Dublin Sciota with um, – the Kevin, Kevin Cleveland, Cleveland right. McKenzie, um, Huddle. I mean, every I, truly, I don't, I don't think there's any tournament or any event in Columbus that me and Mark could contact the school or the coach and say, hey, we would like to come cover this, that they would not roll out the red carpet for us. And I, I truly, and although I might not say it because I know I'm the... Um, the, 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 the prickly guy on the show, <laughs> as opposed to Mark. I truly do appreciate everything that you do for us so we can do what we do for you. I truly do uh, mean that. You're the cactus, I'm the golden retriever. That's just the way it is. I Sean, know. embrace it. Sean, is that all we have? I think we are. Hey, how, how many minutes is this? Oh, oh 44. I'm taking you over. And now you are inside the circle. <laughs>